Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, I've been playing around with this Scootopia carp which is this will be like part three and what I've done is I've checked all the or tried different jets and um, basically everything that the forums are saying which is basically it won't tick over correctly it, it's too fast and it's running on the choke and um, I've done a pressure test and it's come come back fine I've got no blown seals or anything I mean as you know the engine was just built anyway so I wouldn't expect it but you never know <clears throat> you never 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 know but uh, what I've decided to do is check the pathways of the fuel um, from sensors of opinion that I can sort of gen what's going on in the uh, outside world the that's a choke jet let me find the other jets we've just knocked them down as usual I will tidy up one of these days that's the main jet and the atomizer and I'm just looking for looking for the pilot jet at the moment it should be there it is under there isn't it yeah that should get it out no, that's another main jet and a pilot jet and just check that that's a 50 no that was one I was messing around with last night, which is a 45. <clears throat> the basic carb setup is a 50 um, pilot jet. <clears throat> oh, I should have loads of them here. That's a 45 again, it's sobs law in it. I do love these uh, the writing on these jets is so small that's a 50 that one's a 50 okay, that one should be as well That looks like a 45 badly stamped but anyway <clears throat> what the sensors of opinion is is it can be the top of this jet I mean the sides where it's fed so the fuel comes in the these holes in the side which you can see through anyway yeah crystal clear I'm not reaming them out or anything I'm just put the wire through and I know it's not the jet because I can't have every jet I've got with a blocked a blocked jet in the middle there. I mean you've got to be careful with that because it's not very big. And bear in mind this is just one wire that I've poked in and I can see that through there. So that jet is not blocked. And I bet you that, that one's not blocked as well. well. It's not blocked through the two side holes again which is easy to see. This is the major one in the top. Yeah, that's clear as well. So it's not the jet. So the sense of opinion is it, <clears throat> it's fuel starvation to the pilot. I know I've got good fuel and I've also taken off the, um, the petrol tank lid. So I, I know it's not a, you know, a vacuum there and the, the uh, petrol's not coming through. So, nobody actually explains this in videos. On this series of carburetor, turn down there so you can actually see what I'm on about. These series of carburetors, this, um, let me start from here. All of the jets, 
pick up from the direct from the feed from the the bowl basically so they feed from the bowl but the pilot jet doesn't the pilot jet basically is fed through the main jet and atomizer so it sucks up here and then you've got an angle so you've got a tube coming in on the side here and feeds into the pilot jet that's a choke pilot jet main jet <clears throat> So what we can do is, whatever I've done with that, 1.5 Allen um, key, don't know what I've done with that again. I've got too much rubbish in the way, I will tidy up. But um, a bit over the top there. I'll put it down somewhere I'll have, I'll have a look I'll cut away because it's boring just watching me try and find stuff it actually fallen to the ground this is 1.5 uh, millimeter allen bolt uh, allen key I should say so what I'm going to do is there's a passageway that goes across and that should feed down and make sure that's clear that's not pushing in very easy and it should do there you go I'm just making sure that that hole is clear now I should see the Allen um, end of the Allen thing which I can't so I'm wondering if that is actually blocked I'll try and get some light into you so you can see in that hole that should that should be feeding in into the pilot jet and it's not so it's pretty poor if I show you on a jet X and I've got this out rather than start taking that carb around look at the size of it and you can see hopefully you can see at the bottom of that hole is my Allen key twisting around so that hole is quite good so we're going to get lots of fuel from this Jetex carb but this one is not going through so I think I might have found what my issue is I've pushed it through now wow it must have been uh, let's see with some light yeah there is a bit of dirt there huh. but that hole this hole in here is not even half the size of, of the one on the Jet X. It's big enough. I know that for the fact because you've only got the hole in the middle of there. That's what's feeding the tick over. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure, run that around a few times. I can actually see it now. See if I can show you it now. I can't actually see what you can see that's the problem but I I can see that whittling around in the bottom and uh, the bit of dirt or whatever was in there I mean the car's been hanging around a while but it was as far as I know brand new so if I get the light behind the camera hopefully you can see that in there and then we've got basically an upward jet so you've got a pathway up across to this hole here and then in so it sucks in air from here pulls the mixture up goes through along here if I can get that again just to show you so it goes along a channel in here and that's where your mixture screw acts on the venturi if you like whatever you want to call it the mist going in here so your that part there I'm trying to get the carb to uh, stand up correctly for you but that part there where the needle wax on just underneath the cover in there that's where you're letting more air or more fuel in so the further you screw it in on these carbs there's more air so you're blocking basically the, fu the fuel from being sucked up so what, you, what you're doing here with the carburetor is the best way I can try and explain it is if it's got um, more air, there's less 
um, you're increasing the air you're, you're taking off the fuel flow so you're letting more air through and less from here so it's picking up less from here so you'll have a weaker mixture and the more you unscrew it it lets more air through here and sucks up more fuel so you get more fuel here so opening it up increases airflow dragging more petrol through that's my understanding anyway of how these carbs work so what we need to do now is we need to make sure that this pathway from here is clear all the way across and also through there other than that it's chuck a carb away time because i can't see anything else that's wrong wrong with this carburetor at all it revs its uh, pants off goes you know it'll go like lightning but as soon as you come off the the throttle and it dies on you it doesn't die instantaneously sometimes it's um it's coming off throttle straight away and another time it's not um it's just one of them things isn't it <clears throat> what can you say you get these teething problems with anything really that's not original it's not overfilling with fuel um, it's now sitting nice and tight on the um, the inlet manifold so i know it's not that i've tried um, the slides i've tried both 150 slides and the 200 and basically um, if it's got a one on it it's richer than a number two or is it the other way around one it's one or the other anyway but um, a one's a 200 and a two's a um, 150 so you've got 78952 would be a 150 a 78951 is a 200 and I've, I still think it's it that one's richer than the other one it's it's basically letting less air through and more mixture so that's the sort of the uh my understanding of it anyway i would say i'm not a carburetor expert or i'd be uh living in some island somewhere with feet up drinking pina coladas or whatever rich people do but you know i'm just clean clean making sure i clean it out again um also as well this is why these carbs don't like no air filter because they're relay or relying i should say not relaying relying on um airflow through here to suck the fuel up so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to whatever i've done with my wire which is over there i'm going to see if the wires go through okay there's nothing stopping them so far so good There's nothing in the way that way but what i need to do is just go through the hole where this acts on so in the back of here there's a tiny hole and hopefully i can get it i'm hoping i can get in there I'm doing is just going through here again for a second because I want to make sure it go it's going through to the first hole and then through I can't see it actually these are tiny holes like I say it's only uh, fractions of a millimeter that you're acting on so The choke one's not so bad because you can see through there you can see through there you know you can see through the middle of there that the choke's clear and it's clear here it's these is the pilot jets the smallest one and if it's going to get clogged it's going to get clogged isn't it you know it's just sod's law i can't really show you but i can see that wire all the way through now it's, there's too much of an angle to see but I can't, I can't get the angle to push it this way in, as I was hoping. Um, the screw itself will go through that hole as well. I can actually see that when it's screwed in. So, and I do know that the the mixture screw is isn't um, blocked. Yeah, I can see it again. 
hopefully that's clear and again when the sleeve is out there you go it, it did push past there so there's my wire so we know that the that mixture screw is uh, fine and I can see it but I can't get it when that's gone through when it's gone through back through that hole Yeah, I can see it, but I can't. I can't um, get at it. It's pushed too, too straight. But it is what it is. I suppose the other way of doing that is to block these off and blow through there, which you can hear. So I can blow through that hole, and it's coming out of here and here. And block them all, all off again there you go I could still I could still feel it blowing through them so I've got the main one the pilot jet one and the air mixture screw blocked off and I'm just blowing in the small so we know fuel is going right the way through <coughs> the only thing I haven't done is just check that way with this wire that that's not obstructed um, you know you are talking like I say fractions of millimeters and it only takes a bit of rust or debris out of the, the um, petrol tank that's got past the sensor I mean that that's gone straight in there there's no there's no obstruction up there I mean crystal clear isn't it I was just um, basically going to see if I can get some oil through here in this hole put the jet back in I put the 50 jet back in that's a 45 and that must be the 50 then that is so hard to read I do believe that's a 50 no that's a 45 as well so I want a 50 in mine That's a 45. Just put them back in their plastic bag. You only really downgrade that one if there's a 50s flooding it too much because it's all to do with the relationship between all of the, the jets and atomizers and That's a 48 and that's a 45 I don't realize I've got so many 45s right so let me get my box out with carburetor bits this beastie here As I said in the previous video, it's always good to have lots and lots of jets. Um, I've got jets for the larger carbs as well. Main jets, that is. Because I'll be searching. Uh, unless one of these two is one. That one I cannot read. Probably why it was out of a packet. And that one. Another 45, wow. Let 
Look at all the beauties. These that look like chokes. The reason they are 45 because that's what I want, don't know. It's just just dawned on me that you know sometimes I suppose I need to look at charts etc because uh, the pilots are 45 and the um, chokes are 50 he just dawned on me looking at one of the choke ones there it was marked up 50 so we've got loads and loads of correct 45s I'll put that in there that one in there as well uh, or is that the that's a 151 as we've discussed previously you don't even need to look at the numbers on them you can tell by the holes are bigger than the 200 ones so let's take a nice shiny one of these like that The first shiny one I pick out is 48. There's the 45. And I'm just going to make sure that that is clear in the end. I'll put that there for a minute. And that way you can like I say you can see that one anyway so I'm gonna put that jet in and tighten it up with a screwdriver and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put the air screw in but leave it quite loosely screwed in and then what I'm after now is putting some oil in this hole and letting the oil feed through all the way along I've got some free and one not a lot I, I want like this type of oil rather than um, the what do you call it WD-40 because I want it to be slowly going through like that's taken a while to go down This will probably take 10 minutes or so for it to come down. And what I'm looking for is where it comes through the bottom. I should get a puddle down at the bottom in a minute. Then I know that the pathway is clear. So as I say, I'm just putting a few more drops in there. There we go, that should be enough. I'm just stick that back out of the way. I just need to bear in mind as well, it's got to get through that jet. It will take a long while to come down past that jet. If we undo that jet, we should be able to see it on the jet. see nothing on that jet
definitely gone past there as you can see it's you know I'm talking about that deep into it from there maybe I should have put some WD-40 on it just put that jet back in again and just see what we've got see if we got any oil on that jet so you could always do it with a bit of petrol as well I still can't see any on that that's drier than a dry thing let me put that one away so I don't get them mixed up again the other way of doing it is um, an oil can in there put your finger over the top squirt it in there that's come back out of there which I'd expect it to but I mean that should be pouring out the bottom that was quite a few squirts there you go so we know the pathways are clear then anyway so I'm getting to be at a bit of a loss with this carb, how it's, um, you know, how how is it not working as it should. And say I can I can rev the def out of the the scooter itself, but um, the tick over with this carburetor just doesn't want to know. And leave that hanging on, on upside down for a little while just to drain that out but we know because it came out of here we know that that passage going across that way so where it sucks the fuel up from the main jet and goes into the pilot jet that part's clear it's clear through there it's clear through there and it's clear through here so i'm quite happy with that Just need to clean it all up now. <clears throat> you can see all where the oils come through there as well. That's only because it came down where the main jet pickup is. Dry that all off. Oil out of there. What I can do as well is blow through that again. It's not worth firing up a compressor just for that. Your breath should be able to blow that through. So, looks like we've got a bit of a soaked rag now, oil wise. So I'm blocking them two up again and that I'm just blowing through that top hole that one there yeah see how wet that is again lovely So we know we've got fuel. The last thing which I, I've not sort of thought about until now is is it <clears throat> is it old fuel that's causing my problem? Because the scooter has been stood all winter. So it's a possibility that the, it's it's the fuel that's causing it, not the carburetor. It just seems weird how it you know it runs on choke all day long, which everybody tells me is a uh, block jet 
block pilot jet or an oil seal but I've, like I say I've already checked that and if you do a leak down test and it you know it stays there and it has done overnight it, it's not it's not a blown seal basically or you're as close as damn to knowing it's not a, a block seal um, what I can also do as well because I have got a bit of fuel here not much from the carburetor you know from the float bowl what I can do is just dip the carburetor in what I've got there and feed some of that through the hole just to clean the oil out because uh, if you don't get the oil out it's going to be white smoke time that's pretty good I'm just going to get a piece of rag to dry that carburetor I'll cut quite a bit and that old one we'll call that dead now another one for the bin we'll grab our carburetor and give it a good wipe down dry her off and then we'll clean all the parts and rebuild it again we're just wiping it down as I say the, the choke you know works I mean it runs absolutely beautifully on the choke the sooner you come off the choke to run it um, at first I thought I might not have been giving it long enough you know it being a, a rebuilt engine but even when the engine's really really hot it's still the same so hence looking into more details of you know are these carbs any better than the jet x carb uh, hopefully they are at the moment i would say not you know my personal experience with them is uh you know not a great one at the moment i was just expecting just to bolt this on um you know with it with its standard jets that was one of the reasons why i went for the standard 200 piston and barrel one you know and didn't mess around with anything because you haven't got to mess around with your jet in and or you shouldn't have to anyway um i thought i'd go from somewhere you know pretty easily definable and um take it from there but uh it's fight this carb's fighting me every mo well apart from revving it you know and and even on the choke it revs fine so if it was an electronic fault i'd expect it to four stroke which it's not doing it's just um it just literally is dying so it will tick over tick over tick over and then go off which is really frustrating and trying to get it on a slow tick over is frustrating as well at the moment all I'm doing is I'm really going into all the crevices and making sure because these carbs I don't know what's you know they've got so many little angles on them that just seem to hoard dirt I really do I'll just go through that hole again that's clear and I suppose if I know the um, the hole around that's bigger than the pilot jet but ideally I would say you're probably trying to get one of these holes on the side there to line up I'm just going to go through that again make sure that one's clear get to the stage where you get petroled out don't you so that one's clear Like I say, I'm not reaming it out. I'm just seeing that I can see the pin through the hole, which I can, or wire in this case. So that can go in there. I'm going to um, jet it up with a standard 118 at the moment and then take it from there. And I'll just be happy that it ticks over. So um, let's look for the atomizer first. In fact, we can put the choke jet in. And the choke jet, you can see right through the hole from one end to the other, but we'll poke it through. Anyway, it's a pointless exercise in my opinion, but I mean, that's gone straight through. And it'll poke up, see it come out there. 
but that's clear we know that's clear and then we've got our little feed holes on the side and they're clear as well I didn't expect them not to be like I say the car just been sat around so you don't know if it's been run on E5 and it's gummed up a little bit you just buy them in good faith don't you that they're going to do the job that you want them to do so let's screw that in so that's our choke jet going in and again don't over tighten any jets so I want a that's a 200 atomizer I know by the holes um, the the 150 has got bigger holes which I showed you in a different video you can see that that top hole is bigger on that than that and hopefully that's a 118 yes it is so I got to the stage last night of leaving it with oh I suppose we better go through these and we've done all the rest of the uh, jets so we can go through the main main jet again and that's gone straight through as you can see let's say it picks up and runs pretty decently it, and it ticks over very fast as well good you know what I mean it's uh, it's when you come come off and you just want it you know dump 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 no chance so these little air holes they're all clean I've just gone through the other previous three and that should just go through there I'm gonna get it lined up yeah and then you've got your last one through the bottom I'm gonna get it lined up again just trouble with wire this fin it just bends but, uh, I'll try try the other end you never know your luck there you go so it's gone through there as well so all all of the holes all of these holes are in in the clear the main jets in the clear that can go in so again you just screw that in and I'm just doing it slightly but with a ratchet that'll, do. that'll never come undone so what we've got now is our float now I did try different floats and needles yesterday in case it was a fuel starvation you know I've literally gone through all of any recommendation I've got or I could find on the internet uh, and YouTube as well because I use YouTube the same as uh, everybody else so we've got our standard um, and I, I did use a proper Delorto one yesterday I've got two or three of them so it made no difference and the the petrol itself comes on and off you know it, if I leave the petrol on uh, it's not flooding so I'm pretty confident that we are getting enough fuel so again the needle goes in a little cutout and I always find it best to turn that upside down and just line it up push it in place and then just get your pin which we've got here and we need to just give that a wipe again you don't want any dirt really at all <clears throat> before I start my scooter I'm going to um, drain the fuel out of the petrol tank and um, what I'm doing here is just make sure that that's home that's it and it should move freely and when we put our side on we can blow into the pipe and moving this up and down like that shouldn't have any petrol in it or air and then it should be in so moving that up and down you should be able to blow air through and it comes through that hole under there <clears throat> if I can uh, show you with that again that hole there is where the fuel comes in from here yeah right there just making sure that's clean as well yeah I think the Jetex used to uh, suffer from junk in, in there. This hole wasn't big enough, so you get uh, petrol starvation. I think they were more or less set up for 150s in India, not what were us idiots over here like driving 200s, don't we? So, you know, it wasn't, they were not really, uh, you know, made for a 200. They were set up for a 150 and okay, sirrah, sirrah. I have got a bit of debris in, in here, right in the corner. I'm just going to get my edge of my 
rag and just give that a wipe in there and get rid of it all or try to the trouble is with small little um, stuff like this it goes through the the rag easily too easily in fact and then what we need to do then is blow our little gauze out our filter which basically stops nothing what you're hoping for basically is in the bottom of here and I'll just dry that out because I don't want petrol drive going everywhere I'm just drying out the the float bowl what you're after basically is anything that's metallic I don't know why they don't put a tiny little magnet in there to be honest that that would have been an idea maybe they didn't think about it or there's a cost implication I don't really know but a little magnet would have just drawn all of the filings and that away from the jets this here is to stop it because it's a solid mounted carb and it's moving like that it's to stop the fuel from frothing and you always got a reserve of fuel in there for the jets to pull from you know otherwise the fuel's going left and right all over the place so it could actually um, you know go and uh, cause it to have too much fuel and, and uh, cock up the jets basically but that's why the jets go in that part there so that goes on like that and then we've got our screws which are here the long screws uh, Jetex they've uh, decided to do it upside, upside down so the screws on a Jetex come in the bottom so if they're going to wiggle loose they're going to just going to fall out and you'll, you'll lose the uh, float bowl and I suppose they shouldn't do but is, you know Lambert has shaped themselves apart anyway even the, the best of us know that it's uh, you know it's a two stroke lots of vibration and it is what it is so so tighten up these two screws and our float bowls on and then what I want to do is just clean the nylon gauze out it's, it's it is clean but it's picked up a bit of dirt from laying on the table and it's got it's got a little bit of dirt on that side which is uh, the petrol side <laughs> again just blow <laughs> blow through that like I say I'm going to drain the petrol out of the tank in a minute and uh, filter it just to see what I get out of it because the petrol it's probably been in there for over the winter anyway What's it, about four months I would say last time I used the series two so maybe even a bit more than that I was, I was using the uh, 225 last year the GP so what I always do again you've got two little cutouts on the side I always put it on that way round sorry that way round so my little knockout is on the right hand side towards the the engine is in, in effect yeah and then we need to get this inlet and just pull off the petrol pipe for a minute and take out the petrol seal and it has got a bit so it's getting a bit of debris from the petrol I would say because I did clean this out the other day so it's you know it's nothing bad it's just I'll get that petrol and let it soak in that for a second and I'll dry it off they're not big pieces it's probably rust from the tank the joys of owning a 61 year old scooter probably but and I suppose the new fuels are not going to help along that way either are they so I don't know if that is just you know it's had some old fuel in there hasn't it because it's uh it's got a mark on the inside not shiny shiny and new but what we need to do now is just what i tend to do is just put a bit of petrol on the seal put the seal in like so and then put the carburetor on oh, over the top such you've got a pin there see that 
put the pin in and then hold that when you do like the screw which is a square like a hexagon goes through there and it's got a washer on it I don't know if anyone can see that little washer there little brown washer cardboard paper type one and again just I just use the socket just to give it a you know a little bit of that's it a nice little turn and then I'm going to dry that off a bit more and uh, put the air screw back on the I was looking at the different air screws as well the Jetex one is different it's got a very fine point on it compared to the Scootopia one I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can so the Jetex one is on the right as you're looking at them and the left one's the one from the Scootopia one and they have got different threads because the Jetex one tell a lie it's gone in today not fully it only goes in about three or four turns and stops now that's that's solid whereas the Scootopia one goes all the way in Yeah, I'm still screwing that in. And then I'll screw it all the way in. And it's up to you whether you want to go. Right, so that's all the way in. So what you're looking at there is um, <clears throat> what they say in the workshop manual, the original Lambretta, is to turn that out, out even, not out, out, half a turn. So that's in the same position. So back half a turn it can't go past yeah back half a turn that's half a turn out so that would be considered to be running quite lean um, which is, it could be one of my problems but I normally do one and a half yeah so one and a half turns out is where I normally start from um, and see see where that gets us like I say I'm going to end this video because I want to drain out all of the fuel uh, from the uh, petrol tank and uh, either tomorrow or the next day I'll uh, put some fresh fuel back in it again and uh, we'll see where we get with that because uh, also as well I want to try a new spark plug as well and I've ordered a, a different make of uh, Japanese spark plug which um, you know I've been somebody suggested them to me so I've, uh, I've bought three or four and I'm just waiting for them from eBay and I'll let you know if they're any good as well instead of using the usual um, N4s which I've been converted to or the um, you know the B7 ES range from uh, NGK but uh, yeah we'll see it's uh, I never know why they get so dirty when you know just sitting there sucking dirt in from the air I suppose I suppose if it's dirty on the outside what's we'll it you know what you're stopping it from being in the inside so but also as well i'm going to put the 200 slide back in which is that one so with the number one just leave that back in there when i put it back on the cable we're back in business again so again thanks for watching and uh, having some patience with me at the moment because i do want to show you the scooter starts all right because it's running on the choke okay it's just um when you're off the choke it just doesn't want to know so i might if i don't get over that um i mean it was raining the other day so it's dry today but what i'm going to try and do is pull it out so i don't kill myself with the fumes and um we'll see i'll show you what i mean by the problem with the the actual scooter itself at the moment but it's just teething problems as we all know so you just have to have lots of patience sometimes lots of patience sometimes but you know that's life in it and again thanks for watching everybody and take care everybody and have a good week yeah cheers for now bye